Welcome. This is my fifth video on Go. Uh, I am glad to say that I'm enjoying it and I think I'll make some more. Uh, in fact, uh, one of my friends who uh, I reviewed his game in the second video, Bart, uh, he watched it and he thought it was great, except uh, he took offense at the game that I picked of his uh, to actually watch. Uh, he was the one, if you remember from video two, that we called the squirmer. And he said, no, 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 I'm so much better now. I don't, I don't squirm as much. You got to see, you got to see, you got to see. So I said, okay, show me a game. And uh, he pointed me out to this game. And this is a game actually between two, uh, two people I both know, both of them. Uh, Bart, is, Bart, the formerly known as the squirmer, is the pl white player in this game. Uh, it's a really interesting game. Uh, even in the first two moves, it actually gives us something really interesting to talk about. So I think it's definitely worth reviewing for our fifth video. So let's get started. Black opens 4-4. This is normal. We've seen this before many, many times. Uh, but white, too, has a problem. This is, uh, at least according to Kajiwara in his very famous book, The Direction of Play. If you don't have that book and you're a Go player, you need it. It's a great, great book. Uh, just talking about you know where on the board the next move should basically play, be played and why. Uh, and this is one of those moves that uh, is addressed very directly in the book. I think actually, in fact, that if you look at the book in uh, the third chapter when it talks about the opening, this is the exact board position that they give, they, uh, that Kajiwara gives and explains that white two just lost the game. In other words, white just played the losing move on the second move of the game. This is pretty hard for most Go players to believe, but, you know, Kajiwara makes a pretty compelling case. Uh, we have to think about why this is a little bit further. Um, to see that this is the losing move, you just think, hey, white's taking a corner, corners are good. But there's a pretty big difference between a move like that and a move like this, uh, as far as the direction of play is concerned. I've talked about this before in other videos, too, but you can see that on either one of these moves, uh, it makes the board a little more open on one side, right? If we play a move, a stone there and a stone there, we can actually see uh, that's different than this. Uh, if I were to ask you which side is biggest, well, you should be able to identify that you're just eyeballing it. This side, if we go from between these two stones, is smaller than these two stones, right? There's more space here. So still, it doesn't really answer the question, why is this move wrong? Well, uh, when white plays here, black will play something like this, Kajiwara actually makes the case that this is even the better move. This is the correct move in this position um, to play a 5-4 stone. White, uh, again, if you follow conventional opening theory, should play something down here in this corner, uh, maybe 4-4 four, four point. But now black gets to play this move and play this outside. And here's the rub. All three of these black stones are working really well together. They're all taking outside positions black can make a really nice framework in this area. Uh, this is, you know, I'm, this is high level go thinking, but it's really worthwhile to point out. Whereas these two white stones are already kind of injured. Um, this black stone is already impeding on the potential on this side for white, uh, and uh, black gets an ideal framework. Uh, if you don't know any 5-4 or Joseki, that's okay. Um, so you might be a little too scared to play this move, um, in which case this one almost does the exact same thing. The triangle, the framework, isn't quite as biased to the outside, but it's biased enough to, uh, to still work really effectively. So whenever we want, whenever we, excuse me, whenever we don't want our opponent's stones to work really well together, we have to play moves that don't let our opponent uh, let their stones have clear and concise relationships. So that's why we don't play this move ever. Uh, you will not see this move um, being played in any sort of top-level professional game. Uh, they'll almost always, if they're going to play this corner pl and play a 3-4, play this move uh, for that exact reason. Now, uh, if black still wants to make that triangle that we just saw, he can't, right? Because if black takes this corner, white will get this corner. And now when black approaches this stone, black is going to be wanting to approach from this side. And now there isn't a giant framework. The stone is actually breaking up the right-hand side. So uh, this is why we play this move and not this move, basically always. Uh, and, you know, as I've already mentioned, Kajiwara goes as far as to say that this is the losing move in the game. Uh, now we'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see a little bit longer. This is an amateur game. Uh, you know, I doubt that the direction of play on the second move is going to win or lose the entire game. So you'll have to stay tuned to see who actually wins this game. But uh, keep in mind, you know, white, second move, this move is something that should just raise your eyebrow. 
Let's see what happens next. So black takes an additional corner. This is really weird given what we just went over with uh, the idea of Kajiwara, right? Because he says white is playing this low stone, creating this asymmetry on this side of the board. Black should just try to build a framework, you know, play outside moves. Well, when black plays this 3-3 three, three stone, 3-3 uh, three, three moves are almost never trying to build a framework. 3-3 three, three stones are just trying to take territory directly. So this is really inconsistent for black. So even though white played this, you know, low 3-4 stone in the wrong direction here, black's actually going to, you know, totally abandon and trying to make any sort of outside framework and instead just take territory. This is really inconsistent, and this is also a very, very dubious move. White will then take the additional 4-4. Four, four. In this case, I like this move. Uh, I, like the, I like the fact that it's on the 4-4 four, four because black just played low. And if black plays 3-3, three, three, that means there's going to be more side on the, uh, really just more, more potential on the outside because the stone is low. And the 4-4 four, four is a good move to take advantage of that. So I like this move here. So those are your four opening stones. We can see that, you know, at least according to traditional Go theory, both players have made, you know, pretty significant mistakes on the first four moves. That's... This is a this is a great example of uh, when you know both players haven't you know read the direction of play and and don't understand how these stones are related in the very opening. Uh, so it's hard. It's all very theoretical and very abstract, but it's a really good lesson. Let's keep going. So now Black plays this approach move. Uh, this is very natural, right? We're trying to form a framework on this side, high approach. It'd be even nicer if Black had something over here, um, but he doesn't. So Game on. White attaches, and the two play out a Joseki. Uh, in this case, I think low is okay. There could, you could black could have also played high, uh, but that's fine. White approaches, and black plays this move to try to keep white out of the corner. This is a move we don't usually see in this position. Uh, when we kick a white stone like this, it's usually because we want to make it heavy and attack it. Because what this will indu induce is white to do this. And this is exactly what black is telling white to do, but in the reality is white isn't unhappy to do this. Uh, this is actually making this outside very strong, and there's a lot of bad Ajji in this corner. The Ajji in here is uh, you know, pretty easily taken advantage right, right of way. White can even just play this and say, hey, black, what do you want? Do you really want the outside? Are you going to you know, dare me to live in here? Uh, or do you want to come kill the stone? Um, or do you want to just make your territory solid. So if black does this, there's a lot of Aji in here now that black can come in, live, attach, uh, start a co. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. If black decides, hey, I just want my territory, there's a very well-known Joseki uh, that will get played out when white Hane is here. Black blocks. White Ataris. And this is the tricky move. Don't never connect this. In this situation, you have to pull back, let white take, and counter Atari. And it doesn't look like white got a whole lot, because uh, if white were to connect, this is just a clump of stones. But the trick is white shouldn't connect here and just take sente. And this is basically a sente reduction. Now this corner is much, much smaller. There's not as many points in here. So anyway, this is uh, because we're making white stronger and there's still Aji on the inside. That's almost why we never kick unless we have something over here like this move to attack these two stones effectively, which we don't. So we probably shouldn't kick here. If black really was mindful of being of being territorial here, um, probably this move, the Suso Baro, is uh, probably slightly more advantageous because it uh, induces white to come over here and fight something like this. But at least uh, black has support and can fight this way. Uh, when we just kick this, it's just a pretty straightforward exchange, and uh, you know your black isn't necessarily better off because of it. We don't want to make exchanges that don't improve our situation in some way. Uh, white also has a very nice move, a nice extension, five space extension from the upper left hand corner. Uh, five space extensions are really important in Go because this is about as far as we can play, as far as we can extend uh, with the expectation that if our opponent tries to invade, at least the opponent's life will be made a little bit difficult. And you can see that pretty easily because if black were to just play in the middle here, it's pretty easy to take black's base away and black can't easily make two eyes. Uh, whereas if white had a six space uh, um, extension here, when black comes in, it's actually uh, much more comfortable, right? Black can actually make a tiny base here. 
or um, even further, right, we can really come in here and make a base. Uh, if white wants to defend over here, we can maybe even play something like that. So again, the key number here is five space extension. That's a nice extension because it makes your opponent's life very difficult in terms of making a base. The other nice thing about this move is it's also three spaces away from a two stone wall. That's also a good shape. When we only have one stone, and we want to make an extension, well, if we want to make it solid, we can only go two spaces. When I have a two space extension, we can go three spaces. So again, this is a very nice move. White's very happy to play this move, especially because there's still some Aji kind of things in the corner and on this side. Oops, that's not the game. That's the game. So black approaches, and this approach is fine. White will defend and just, uh, again, continue developing the top, and that's good too. This next move is a little questionable. It's hard to uh, actually know what to do as black here. I think it's it's actually not that bad in the whole global context of everything. Um, but he, the the situation is that because the left hand bottom uh, bottom left hand corner stone is so low on the three three point, it's actually really hard uh, to develop any of this territory. Um, white can invade in here pretty easily. And at the same time, uh, black can also be made very over-concentrated at the top. Before, when black kicked the white stone, uh, black didn't really have a good follow-up yet because we couldn't attack this. Um, it w we didn't have it in tempo. But in this case, what we can do is, if black extends here, immediately come over here and attack it because we already have this stone over here. Um, these three black stones are now a little upset. They have to decide to make a low base or run out, and if they run out, then white can make a base and also run out and sort of direct the traffic of this game. So with, uh, oops, let me delete those marks, there we go. Um, with this extra stone here and with a small extension, uh, white actually has a lot of good options here for uh, with what to do. So I'm not really sure that this is the best move. Um, I, can, I can see why black played it, because uh, if we play a, snorm a normal Jeseki like this, well, now we have an additional problem that now we have a, a second line stone, a third line stone, a third line stone, and a th another third line stone. All of black stones are really, really low, and it's not entirely clear that we're going to have enough points to uh, to win the game. So I can understand the rejecting of that Joseki if we uh, delete that and then go back. Another common Joseki here is to play is to, just, is to just back off. However, this is uh, really problematic because normally we play this when we have a black stone not here but here and we can make a nice five space extension right just be just like uh, the one at the top was good makes it hard for your opponent to invade this would also make it harder for your opponent to invade however when we have the three three stone here now it's a six space extension and it's a lot easier to invade so this move doesn't really help us defend the side a whole lot so i can understand why black chose the one uh, that he did uh, I think it's a tough call no matter what. Um, yeah, I'm not actually sure what I would do if I approached this corner and uh, had to find another move to play. This, this, is a, this is a very difficult side to develop, all because the stone is on the 3-3. I guess I don't have a lot of uh, you know experience playing this type of shape because, again, I don't play 3-3 a whole lot in my own games. And um, you know maybe it's holding me back as a Go player because I don't explore it enough. Uh, or I don't give enough credit, but again, it's uh, it's a tough move to use and build any any sort of large framework with. So I and I and I like big frameworks, so I tend to avoid it. Uh, for some reason, White is scared that this might turn into something big down here and wants to reduce immediately. Maybe White's also thinking that uh, this bottom area is also developable uh, for White, which it is a little bit. But again, White already has a couple low stones here, and Black has a little bit of a wall here, so it's gonna be very tough for white to really really develop this um, if white did think that uh, you know he really want to develop this it'd probably be better uh, just to let me go back to my other tool to play something like this play a little bit further away give it a little more space um, to uh, to develop something whereas this when white plays here black should immediately play something like this help out this extension that we already noticed was too far uh, this actually fixes our extension uh, to a five space extension, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so that's good there. It helps out the corner, uh, develops the corner. It also puts a lot of pressure on this stone. This stone is floating and can easily be attacked now. 
apparently that's not what the players did. Uh, when white came this close, black didn't respond in the correct direction and rather attached to this weak stone. This kind of looks like a Joseki, but it's really kind of questionable, especially in this position. Um, as we've already noted, this bottom position is actually really hard for white to develop because of these two low stones over here. And uh, again, this black little miniature wall here makes um, a foothold, so black can reduce this very easily um, with moves like, uh, just play a move, uh, oops, not that one, misclick, uh, go back, with this one. Uh, this is the move, right? Because white can either try to cut through, which black will just sort of back off and either build a big wall here or run away very lightly. And if white submits, well, then black can just sort of keep reducing. Uh, and this is uh, this is happy enough for white. Um, or excuse me, happy enough for black because uh, white is only taking third line points, and usually that's not enough to win the game, especially when black can start making something really big in this uh, center right area. So again, black should not be wor too worried about this area, so this is the wrong direction. White Hanes, that's, uh, that's a good move, at least in this position. And black looks for trouble. Now, this is a, uh, the next thing I'm going to tell you guys. Uh, if you're a Q player, and especially if you're a double-digit Q player, uh, this is a great, great shape to keep in mind. Many players, including the players in this game, are going to start this fight by uh, Atariing one of these two stones. In this type of example, you don't want to help your opponent. This is a tough fight for white, and white needs all the help white can get. So instead of uh, trying to force your opponent into making good shape, white should just try to back off and let black decide what to do and take whatever the best case scenario black should, uh, um, should allow. So if uh, black wants this stone, that's fine. White will Atari over here, black will take. White will threaten a co. If uh, black connects, white will connect here. Black can even take this stone. White will counter Atari. And then white will actually capture the corner. So in this variation, and this is a quasi Joseki, uh, if just by backing off, if black really wanted that outside, was really worried about these bottom points becoming white's territory, white has a good countermeasure to just take the corner. If uh, black wants to do something different, say, Oh, I don't know. Well, I'll come after that stone. We still have a similar variation, perhaps even worse. It's actually hard to, for black to do anything else, really. Maybe black just defends. Well, this might be fine too, especially if we have a ladder. So we can just ladder this stone. If we don't have the ladder, it still looks like we can fight this just by extending. And now this stone has to just uh, is is a burden for black. If black wa doesn't want to get reduced in the corner, uh, white can just make a nice shape and capture it. So. This is what I was saying. When you get in a cross-cut fight like this, yes, sometimes you want to take an easy Atari if you need a, the stones to flow in a certain direction. But if you're just looking for, uh, you know, for the best uh, possible um, scenario of what to get out of this, often it's just better just to extend one of your two stones, usually the weaker one, and uh, you will get something out of it almost every time, something that you, um, perhaps even better than what you should be entitled to, had you just Atari'd and pushed, uh, like these two players do. So let's take a look and see what white actually does in the game. This is the game. White does this dreadful Atari. This is a actually really sad Atari for white to make, uh, because black shape is just going to look awesome coming out of it, and I think you guys will be able to see this. Again, I think white is thinking, whoops, that's my Windows key. Uh, I think white's thinking that white really wants these points for some reason, um, and that's might be fine, except if white really decides that white wants these points no matter what, uh, he might have to give up all of these points to get it. And as you can see, this is much smaller than over here. So this is uh, not so good. But let's see how it goes. Black extends. That helps black shape a lot. White takes another Atari. This is another really sad move for white. It's actually letting black fix all of his defects. White extends. Now, uh, black has two really good choices here immediately. The obvious one, I think, is the one that they play in the game, is just this extension. Just, you know, keep allowing yourself to be pushed from behind, so you just take all these points. However, the other one that they don't play, I think, is more interesting, is to take this Atari first. And assuming that white connects, because white has to, uh, black can even try something like this. Now, this is a move we don't always want to take. Uh, sometimes it might be better just to take this Atari 
and then extend like this. And therefore, white has this, this uh, weakness that white has to decide how to best fix. But if black just extends, uh, to me, this surely looks a lot like uh, these three stones right here are going to die. Now, in the meantime, this, this still might not be the best result for black, and I'll show you why. Uh, it has everything to do with the fact that white will get a bunch of free moves out on the outside. Something like this, maybe. Uh, and maybe this thickness is worth something. Or, uh, let's see, can we do even better? I think we could. What if we play something like this? And uh, I'm thinking, I'd like to know if that works. Maybe there's a chance we could either, either capture these stones or force them into a liberty shortage such that black has to come back and capture these stones. And therefore, we'll get a big wall here and a lot of influence here. Now, if we do play this way, however, we did, ha we did give up a lot in this particular variation. Um, so it still is a, it still looks really tough for white if black takes the Atari in fight. It's a tough fight for white. Um, that's why I think black should do it. But even if black was just scared, just take this Atari and, uh, and come back and uh, extend, and white still has to come back and play a move. And what this does is it allows a liberty shortage here on this group, uh, where later on if you play something like this, well, white can't Hane, right? Because now you can just cut it off. Because uh, these two stones will be in trouble. So, in general, when we push, when we Atari and push our opponent into good shape, usually that's going to mean our opponent's going to get a good result. In this case, black does. White has to come back and fix. And uh, black's next move. Oh, black really doesn't <laughs> want white to make these into points. I think it's probably better for black to actually just play something like this, continue trying to expand uh, this area of the board, because this area will be worth more points uh, than, like I said, this area. This can be easily reduced. Um, where this is, has so much more potential. But in the game, black is greedy. Black is jealous of white's uh, little bit of points here, so black immediately invades. Again, this is not a good move to reduce this. Uh, it looks very dangerous. It looks like it gives white a chance because white can counterattack. Uh, perhaps something like this, even, will be a sufficient counterattack, and now this stone will have a very difficult time getting out. Uh, it's not dead yet, but it's going to be difficult. Um, instead, I think black should play something like this and just reduce from this side. Stay away from white's wall. This is strong. Uh, you just want to make sure this wall doesn't become a giant box, and uh, that'll be enough. So in fact, in the game, white does do this, make this exchange, except instead of going after this stone, white is now jealous of black's territory. So this is really interesting, right? Where we have uh, white build this little thing down here, and black starting to build this big thing over here, and both players are simultaneously jealous of each other's territories. That's kind of weird, uh, that neither one will actually immediately respond to the other stone. Uh, black decides, instead of attacking this white stone and trapping it on the inside, black it likes these points and wants to try to keep them, so black will touch this stone. In general, this is a really bad move. Uh, because it just allows white to do all sorts of things. It's kind of like passing in a lot of ways. Uh, when you're just trying to greedily take points you think you're entitled to, uh, the correct way to deal with this stone uh, is probably uh, play a move like this, or if, depending on the Aji down here, play a move like this, something that will both help out this stone and, and attack this stone. Uh, so I can't imagine that this is anything close to the correct direction for the black player. This move is very uh, courageous, but it seems okay. Um, there is a little bit of an issue if black plays a move like this, but it doesn't seem like uh, it's too much of a problem. Black can counterattack. Um, but meanwhile, if, if you were black, ima imagine if you were black and you thought you were going to get all these points, and white played this, and then you tried to take those points, and then white played this again. <coughs> oh, excuse me you'd be very sad and jealous, right? I mean, white looks like white's just going to crawl in here and eat this. So black uh, decides just to go play somewhere else, just gives up. And really, this is still the most active area of the board. Um, the reason why black thinks he has time to play this, or needs to have time, I guess I should say, is because black's becoming a little bit worried about these stones. Uh, how we didn't really make a solid base with them before, we didn't play a regular Joseki, uh, and they can be upset, so black is going to try to settle them right now before this uh, this extension gets worse and can undermine this group. 
it's uh, it's not bad thinking, quite frankly. But again, it feels, you know, it, it's this was all induced because Black decided to play this move here and sort of force give White a free extra move to come on in, um, where it seems like Black could play something that's more useful on the outside. Uh, white responds, which is a big, big move. And now Black plays this turn. Well, if Black just plays this turn directly, uh, he doesn't have to make this exchange here. And in fact, if we just go back, just compare what this looks like, if Black plays this turn and if White responds somehow, well, now this White Stone is the stone that looks really scared, right? The stone has a really hard time running out. Uh, it looks like White can get something uh, out of here. Um, but depends, I guess, if Black can uh, maybe afford to play one Hane first and threaten this stone. If, if White has to respond back here, the stone looks really hard to do anything with. Uh, white has to try to come down here. Maybe black can peep. Maybe fix some shape. Move like that. And uh, I don't see a clear way for this group to get two eyes with this, with all these black stones around here. This might just be swallowed. So, but in the game, however, because we had this exchange, and whoops, no, don't close. Misclick. I'm, I'm really inaccurate with my clicking today. Black comes out here. Uh, white does respond, uh, and uh, that's enough of a scare to remember. Black's still jealous; doesn't want his stone to get captured, so he runs out and plays the move that I've been wanting to play all along to reduce. Uh, so this is, uh, I would say, both players are very ineffectively attacking uh, their opponent's uh, reduction stones. White decides to make his stones a little safer first. Uh, this seems like it's an okay idea. Again, however, you're helping black quite a bit when you play this by touching a weak stone. It's probably better just to do something like this, uh, so you leave more Aji here later. Because uh, when you play that, black's going to help help the shape out by fixing. Um, yep, and then white comes and plays this type of move anyway, right? Where we're just trying to get out. So why help black fix his shape? Just play a move that gets us out first. So. And thus, my reasoning is proved by what the players actually needed to do in the game. Black's still uh, very jealous of his own territory, you know, just, just very solidly trying to guard it. Uh, it is worth a lot of points, but attacking your opponent's weak groups and not letting any of your own groups become weak is probably worth a lot more, in fact. Um, Black already has almost an entire side, though given there's some Aji. Uh, as long as he doesn't have any weak groups and White has weak groups, White will never have the time to expose any of the Aji, and you know this is a lot of points, and Black might be able to make use of this to uh, get a good attack while simultaneously reducing somewhere else, and uh, doesn't absolutely need to take these points specifically to win the game. There's lots of other good ways for Black to win the game. White takes a big move. Uh, this is a big move because, number one, uh, if Black gets it, let's play a move, there's a big difference in the amount of territory that Black and White get here. Uh, white's corner is basically nothing, uh, and black might even get a couple points, and some eye shape perhaps. Whereas if white gets this move, just like in the game, well all those corner points become white, black doesn't get these points, and still might be able to easily be attacked later on. So this is a very large move. Um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good move. I would probably uh, do something at the bottom first. I think the direction of play is still down here. Um, but this is a good move. Um, I'm not sure what this move does other than try to attack this, but the thing is this is a little bit too close um, to this wall. I think black should attack it or try to attack it a little more severely. Um, black doesn't really have to worry about being cut here because it takes a, an extra move for white to cut it, in which case black can play a strong move on the outside to help these stones. Uh, this group over here is actually quite uh, safe already, especially after you know these extra two moves. So, um, you know, knowing when you're strong enough to allow yourself to become cut uh, is another really good skill to have and go. But anyway, Black plays this slow-looking move, and uh, White plays this move. I don't really know what White's trying to do here. It looks like White's just trying to submit and take a few points or even uh, try to help out this group. It's, uh, yeah, it, it's just a very odd shape to me. Um, if white really just wanted to help out this group over here, 
it'd probably be better to do something like this and run it out while at the same time threatening this group, attack it from the top. If white really just did want to play a submissive move and just make a base, uh, this looks like a better shape to me, uh, where it looks like we're, we can pretty easily make two eyes anytime we need to. Uh, this move can be cut on either side that black chooses, and uh, you know is going to actually leave leave some bad odd G for white. Black is just happy enough to strengthen his own group. White will crawl again, and uh, black will cut it off. I think this move is a little mistimed. Um, it's a good move. Um, I'm still thinking that this weak group over here is more important right now. These stones are still kind of light, and they can still run out pretty easily. Um, it's not a big. It's not as big as you think it is to reduce these little points in here now that white is looking a little safer on this side. Uh, white wants to defend. Black reduces even more. Now this move actually does have some implications on the corner, uh, but let's see what white does. I was going to try to push and fight out now. And, uh, alright, that's exciting. So up to there, we now have this new fight. Uh, white's got a little bit stronger here. Uh, remember this black stone? I think this was the initial one that black threw in here. Uh, that black, uh, you know, wanted to make sure that white didn't get any points in here. Well, as it stands right now, this group is not safe. And it's a fight. And so, you know, black has to be very careful uh, about what uh, he does with this group. Uh, if we just have to run out blindly, well, then white will be able to take this outside, never have to worry about this group, perhaps even get some strength uh, in the middle of the board to make this into bigger points, or make it at least strong enough to where we can just invade or take advantage of the corner Aji on the upper right. So this is a this is a major turning point in this game after this fight uh, starts or breaks out with this cut and uh, extension. And we have a weak group on the board. Go is really about weak groups, you know, giving your opponent weak groups and not letting yourself get any. If you have the weak group, while well, your opponent's going to control the game. If your opponent has the weak group, you're going to control the game. And uh, since Black returned the favor and allowed uh, himself to have a weak group as well as White, uh, it makes this whole center of the board very important. Uh, well, let me fix my tool here, and here we go. Uh, black does this push. I This is a little bit asking white to fix his shape. Right now, white has some corner problems. Um, you know, especially later on, this, uh, you know, this, this one stone might need to be a little bit stronger here first. Um, but moves like this give white some real pause. White can't really just defend the corner this way because we have a monkey jump. And uh, if white comes over here first, well, then black can make an eye or uh, at least... Um, make some sort of shape down here that may or may not live in the end. Uh, I think right now white's still kind of okay, uh, or at least should be okay, but you know, there's a lot of Aji right now. When black plays a move like this, you're actually giving white the opportunity to fix some of that Aji. All right, so now black tries to save the group. White will run out his uh, cutting stones. Again, uh, I'm not really sure what black is trying to do here. I mean, there is now a weakness right here at this spot that black can play, but it's not a really big deal. I know black is trying to prevent this stone from being cut off, um, but it seems to me like it's actually more important just for uh, this group to keep getting out. Again, this is the important area of the board where we have a weak group and another weak group. Uh, so white fixes. And this actually doesn't completely fix uh, there's actually still a black reduction move here um, that's a pain for white later. Uh, this move is uh, not as big as white thinks it is. I think white's trying to think, hey, it, makes, it guarantees me two eyes, and I can capture these two black stones if black doesn't do something. However, uh, black should just give those up and get a move in like this. Um, these three white stones are just screwed, uh, no matter how you look at it. They're just really difficult to do anything with. Um, this is probably the best sequence that we can have. Um, probably something like this. And white has to now start running. But as long as white is running, uh, this black group right here is basically 100% safe. As long as black can always threaten to capture these stones, uh, white will never have time to really get a good attack. And so if the game went like this, th this would be a major turning point in black's favor. 
Uh, instead, uh, black does respond down here. And this is a this is a little bit of a slow move. I think black is thinking, you know, is not worrying so much about attacking this, even though that's what he should be thinking. Uh, I think black is thinking, well, now if white does something like this, black can easily make two eyes and just live here. That's, however, two eyes just means two points, and that's not good enough to win. We need to attack weak things if we want to win. So they keep pushing out. White will take this peep. Black will fill, and then white will uh, make this reduction. Now notice that if uh, black had haunted at the top of these three stones in our variation, uh, white wouldn't be able to do this. Uh, black just clamps, and now this is just dead. Uh, you can confirm it for yourself. This is a really common Tsuji. Uh, when you have a, a shortage of liberties on your opponent, uh, you can see that right. if white tries to extend here, just captured. If white extends here, captured. If white extends here, captured. So uh, if black had actually gotten this move in, white never has time for this and never has to worry about it. Since black played the slow move over here, the timing is completely different. And now, white gets to play kind of a pain move like this. Black decides to try to cut it off, and that's fine. In this position, white decides to take territory right now. However, this move ends in gote, or something like, uh, maybe not completely gote, because I guess black has to fix, so maybe it's okay, but I think I would I would just uh, save this for later, because I don't. I it might be worth it for white later on to just hana here and uh, either capture this stone or um, you know run it out or do something. Uh, force black to connect under uh, connect underneath. When uh, we play this, or excuse me, is that what we played? Yeah. Um, we're kind of actually committing ourselves to the idea of connecting underneath and eating these points and not allowing ourselves to be flexible later on. So I think it's more important if black responds here, fine, that's an exchange. Let's make sure this group is safe. And then later on, we'll decide how to play this. This is just endgame, uh, pretty much. And we have to decide what's biggest. And we don't know what's biggest yet, because it's not the endgame. So black takes that. Black fixes. And now white still has to come back and fix this. Uh, this may or, uh, you, know, you know, maybe later on, again, like I said, it's more helpful if we have this move. And maybe we can actually reduce something over here rather than just running. But that's all right. So white just keeps running, white will jump, and now black finally decides that this group is strong enough to counterattack the white group. Uh, before this attack happens, I think black should play one more move. I think this move is important here. And it puts white in a little bit of a bind. If white just connects, uh, now this move looks even more dangerous because we have one more stone added to our weak group, and if this white group were just to run out, it'll, it'll run right, right into that uh, strengthened group. So this move is a big move, and uh, I think it's okay for, in fact, not just okay, but good for black to play it here. White tries to run for his life. Uh, this is, you know, uh, I know Bart earlier said, you know, hey, you have to check out this game. I was much better about my squirming. I'm, I'm getting better at it. Uh, this isn't so much as his usual squirming. He just got himself in a little bit of trouble, and, um, you know, that's usually how the squirming starts. But he does do his best here to, to make good shape. Um, so I have to commend him for that. Uh, Black's playing a little defensive here, very worried about uh, this connection after this stone. I'm actually not, uh, still not thinking that this connection is as big of a problem as Black it thinks it is, especially because Black has this move. And at any time, uh, Black also has this move and this move to make two eyes. So, you know, I think this connection doesn't really need defending. So instead, if Black can make this exchange, um, black should just continue attacking this, and then white will really suffer the fate of uh, his weak group here if something like this were to happen. There's just nowhere to run here. Uh, really difficult. If white wants to cut, that's fine. We just make two eyes, or uh, even just connect, perhaps even better. So this, uh, this move here, the timing is a little bit questionable. White squirms a little more. Black, uh, again, is still very scared about this group, it seems, and wants to strengthen it. Again, this is kind of redundant. If this group didn't solve all of its problems, and it really did, it's actually, it did kind of make it solid enough where Black shouldn't have to worry about it. This move is, again, the wrong direction. Uh, and again, we should be focusing on seeing if we can get some sort of attack this way. So we can then leap in here and, and destroy White's territory. Uh, Black doesn't seem to be thinking that. 
So he's going to keep going at, at it this way. This is a very dangerous move for white. I, uh, it's allowing your opponent to play one extra move on the outside. Uh, something like this, perhaps. If white can live in here, perfect. You did good. If uh, white can't, or black uh, you know, takes away some eyes pretty quickly, something like this, and then plays this, and then white finds out uh, there are problems. Now, it should be okay, because I think this Hane is still good, because white can always give up a stone. Um, but uh, maybe not. It's hard to tell. I don't know if white has two eyes or not, but it looks really scary. This would be something I'd spend a long time reading over if it was in one of my games. Uh, how this whole sequence works out. It doesn't look like white's worried. White is being very brave here. And black is being very defensive because if this group does get strong and black doesn't get out, uh, like in this previous example, when black gets to come out, uh, black's base might be able to be undercut uh, and then black will be the one who gets killed. So white goes about trying to make two eyes and uh, it appears that black has decided that white is basically alive so black tries to go make mischief somewhere else. This isn't really the correct move to make mischief. Uh, as I think I've already pointed out, if white has to respond to a move like this, uh, then we have this move. We also have this is a very common reducing move. Uh, if we just want to reduce here, maybe this is a good way to trap in the white stones. We can play something like this. Uh, and now these stones, these white, this white group has a very difficult time trying to find life. Uh, if we can pop out two of the eyes, you know, we can... Uh, have some other stones on the board to help attack it. Uh, this move, yeah, I, I don't want to read it out, or all the variations, and play them out. Um, but it looks a little bit like we're, it'll help white in the end, because we're just going to create another weak group for, for uh, white to push us around with. This is the moment white decides to make this group even stronger. Uh, I like this move. It also threatens to cut off this stone over here. Um, so that's... Uh, that's a good move. Black needed to take this earlier instead of either one of these two points. Uh, black will fix shapes. Now black has played three moves to white's one in this area. Uh, it's really inefficient. And now white will come back and fix this shape. Um, black will try to get something out of this. This is a, I like this move, um, at least the spirit of it, because uh, what black is saying is, hey, Remember this stone you're trying to eat of mine? If you want to eat it, I am going to try to surround you over here and eat this group. So I like the spirit of this move a lot. And in fact, something uh, white seems to be very aware of that. Uh, and after we have this exchange, white is really just trying to focus on just saving this group no matter what happens. Um, black gets a really nice uh, capture here of these two stones, which also removes a lot of this Aji. This corner becomes quite huge here. Let me just play the, out the rest of this. Um, this is a little bit uh, of a questionable push here. It seems to me like white, if white can find a move that uh, displays the outside, something like this, and if black chooses to do something else, uh, then white will be able to just come underneath and link up. And none of those stones will have to die. Uh, I think when white plays a move like white did in the game. White is putting too much emphasis on the shortage of liberties here on this black group. And, uh, you know, basically you're going to force yourself to get uh, surrounded. Black's just going to automatically come out here, and now this black, this white group is looking like it's in trouble again. So it's a little bit of a greedy play for white to try to do to play this this way. Rather, play move on the outside tries that tries to get you something, makes you safe. If black doesn't capture these right away, then you can go back and fix it. Uh, but this is really dangerous, just trying to save them all right away. Black comes out, white pushes, uh, black comes out again, and white finally tries to make shape. Now we've already noticed that how safe this black group is, so black doesn't really have anything to worry about here. All of black's priority should just be on keeping up the attack on uh, this here white group. So the first move right here I would play immediately is this peep. Just say, hey, are you sure you want to save this whole thing, or can I kill part of it? Uh, so force white to connect. Now uh, we have some choices where we can try playing moves like this and let white out, or just play something like this, uh, something really severe. White has a very difficult time knowing what to do here. If white takes the Tatari and tries to push, uh, you can just follow along with it, and now there's this big invasion here, and white can still come back and capture this stone. 
Uh, so White, you know, is is very busy, is very busy trying to save this group and uh, not let any of these top stones get captured. Something very similar to this happens in the game. I think it's not quite as efficient looking, however. Um, black disconnects and white comes out here. Now even here, I think black needs to find a way to keep the pressure on. Should probably play something like this. Uh, or actually, rather peep first. Oh, I misclicked again. Man, I am just not clicking where I want to. And then come over here and play this. And again, now we're threatening to take away uh, white's two eyes. And uh, you know, white is a little bit hard-pressed what to do here. If white comes out, great. We cut, we Atari, and then we can have our field day with the top. And, or uh, maybe we fix this stone first. Force uh, white to come back and make two eyes. That doesn't even make two eyes. Oh, yeah, I don't know what white plays to make two eyes here, but it's very hard right now. White's looking very uh, in trouble. Because even if white can find the moves to get two eyes here, black's going to be built up over here can reattack this group and uh, as well as that's the group we can reattack if we get strong here as well as invade the top so even if we let white live we're going to get a great result the contingency the uh, the core or I guess the requirement for letting white live however is we can't let white get out and live and connect up that's the one thing we don't want to have happen because then if white connects to this group we will uh, essentially make two weak groups both alive simultaneously and that's a big uh, advantage for our opponent so black uh, is just playing, you know, again, thinking, hey, I have a shortage of liberties here. Black might be able to do something, or white might be able to do something later, so I just want to get more liberties and threaten to reduce the top. Uh, normally that's good thinking, but again, I think this Hane is even more important because we never want to let these two weak groups link up. Um, white actually is kind of greedy, takes territory. Now black takes the peep. That's a good move. Uh, this move, however, looks a little slow to me. Uh, again, play here threaten this entire group. Uh, white has to do something over here and over here, and it's too much, too busy. Uh, they'll make a couple more exchanges, and then uh, white will play this move. This is a very big move. Um, if we can play, again, an outside move in Sente, something like this, and if white has to respond somehow, even then that doesn't still cleanly make two eyes, um, but let's say white has to do something, maybe that and that and then that, that looks good. Then we can come back. We'll have the timing to play this move. And uh, White's eyes look very suspect. So when we pl follow White around out here and don't just allow us to give up a stone, um, we, uh, we might lose initiative over here on attacking this group. So this is good timing for White. Black just defends. Uh, again, Black wanted all these points, and Black played so many moves with the mindset that I just want these points, leave me alone. I just want these points, leave me alone. I just want these points, leave me alone. And now, uh, basically, black has very few points and was not left alone at all. In fact, white even made a nearly almost completely alive group in here in where black just wanted points. So I think black was a little single-minded in thinking that, hey, I just if I, that's a lot of territory. I just need to take it rather than uh, just use it to attack your opponent. All right, a few more exchanges, and now white is basically virtually connected. Uh, there's still a little bit of Aji here, but white, it looks like white can connect at the top or the to the weak group, or formerly weak group, I should say. So white looks good. This is uh, starting to look better and better for white now that white's problems have been solved here, here, and here. White can just focus on endgame now. Black still tries to disconnect, uh, except uh, black's finding out that it's not as easy as black thought. And again, black still has a very weak group over here. Uh, this move looks a little uh, a little bit premature. Um, black looks like black's trying to pop out the eyes, except that this is the move. It doesn't pop out any eyes. Uh, let's see, I don't remember quite this part of the game. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yep, that's just kind of like giving up. <laughs> so white just captured those stones. This is the reducing move I talked about earlier. Oh, white should just connect this. Uh, black doesn't have any good options here except to do this. And uh, white's basically alive and now has sente if black doesn't give up these stones. So, uh, what did they actually do? Yep, that's a good move. So black got to reduce this in sente now. That's a big difference. 
Black will just uh, try to take some points in here. It's good. Uh, white will come around, and again, this is just end game, end game. And now we have something more interesting. White decides to finally go after this group. Uh, this group doesn't look like it can completely be killed. Maybe it can. I gotta look at it a little bit more. Uh, it looks like it should be still okay. Okay. No, oh, but white, black has decided that black doesn't have enough points uh, in order to win. I'm not. Yeah, I guess I kind of agree with that. It looks like white has enough. Uh, so black's going to try to do something drastic. Uh, ooh, what just happens if black comes here? Anything? Yeah, or if we just connect here. Is this anything? Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, I'm not really seeing a whole lot for black there. Um... It just looks like a straight up overplay. Um, but white was too nice and tried to fix the shape. Um, yeah, white still kind of got everything, but black does look like black got, got a couple free moves on the outside, which uh, actually might help the end game on this group. If black can threaten to link up, black might get an extra point or two. Uh, so, Although black still has to give up three stones, so black actually gave up a lot to get that. So yeah, that's that's a net negative for black. Don't make overplays, kids. Uh, some pokes. All right, white decides to cut off that stone. Black's just trying to make eyes. White plays here. Let's see, is that kill? Hmm. Looks uh, close, but not quite to a kill. What did they play? Oh, if black plays there first, white should just come up. Yep, that's what white did in the game. Oh, black tries to make a little more space for himself. Uh, does that move okay? Yeah, that move looks okay. White does this wedge. White connects after he's cut, and that's just game over. There it is. Black just died. So what should have Black done here not to die? Because dying is bad. Here, if White plays there, I think there is good enough. Just force White to try to connect. And uh, there you go, two eyes. Anything better White can do? What if White plays... Oh, maybe there is. Maybe I'm just not good enough to see it. That move? How about that move? Mm -hmm -hmm. I don't know, that looks... Uh, no, that's so... That's okay. Alright, sorry. Um, yeah, I should have looked at this more before I re reviewed it. Oh, yeah, it looks tough to kill. I'm not convinced that there isn't a way to kill it. I'm just not seeing it. And uh, forgive me for that. So anyway, certainly if white plays this, this certainly looks like this is alive to me. And uh, black should have lived. Let's see. Uh, in, in, you know, it, it's clear that white re um, won by resignation after this group dies. Um, but if black actually lives, let's say, just play this out here. Just something like this. Let's see what the score estimator says on KGS. Yeah, it still looks pretty white. Um, and you can see it's actually even overestimating black's points in this region. Um, perhaps overestimating the points in this region as well, but we're not sure who's going to get that yet. If white gets that, it's a pretty big reduction. Uh, yeah, either way, I think white's got it. So, Bart, good job. I, uh, I have now, I will now, uh, renege on the nickname of the squirmer uh i think it's well deserved i think you played a good game here and you should be proud so again that's my uh my 3k lecture if you liked this uh this go review um please uh please like it and subscribe uh to me or this playlist and i'll continue adding more thanks guys